Elmer Leonard started out as a writer of Westerns, and then he kind of segued into writing American crime fiction. And in a way, his crime fiction is kind of an extension of the Western. This is, I think, his first Detroit novel. And the character that appears in the book is related in some ways to the character he wrote in Raylan. So that's what we did. We catapulted Raylan into the story. How could we adapt this story and make it a Raylan story? Part of what's really attractive and wonderful about Elmore's novel is this basic three-hander with the cop chasing the criminal and the lawyer kind of caught in between them. How are you supposed to be in that hat? Travis Tritt. Why, Clement. If you just wanted to see my hat, you could have walked out of Dale Williams' back bedroom and gotten a good look then. You have reason to suspect my client is involved in the murder of Judge Guy. We've got bad guys, we've got sneaky side characters, we've got our hero, Raylan, back in action. We've taken a lot of the things from that book and it leads to a cataclysmic showdown. The original series saw Raylan going back to his hometown. And in Detroit, he is a stranger in a strange land and he encounters Clement Wildman Manziel. There's not really a whole lot of redeemable quality in him. He really is just a bad, bad dude. While we're waiting, you can tell me about Clement Manziel. For Raylan, this is a guy he cannot understand. He's charismatic and repulsive and everything all at once and takes you to a whole new adversary for Raylan that we've never seen before. You know, she is a little young for my taste, but if this were Kentucky, I'd be tapping that ass. It's a lot like playing the devil or playing a guy who would microwave cats or pull the wings off of flies. It's a really twisted person, but who's also really anomaly of frightening, but yet charming and kind of dumb at times and really intelligently gets himself out of situations. This guy left a trail of shit from Oklahoma to Detroit. I watch him and I laugh at times and I watch him and I know he's dangerous and I lean forward and go, what is this guy gonna do next? Givens. Marshal, this is Carolyn Wilder. And Carolyn Wilder, who's kind of the glue between the two. You have a feeling in this story that one, if not all of them, will not come out alive. Detective Robinson. You want to know better than to come in here, harass my client without calling me first. She, like all of Elmore's characters, has her own agenda and her own kind of wants, and nobody is kind of all purely good in his world. And so she's really caught in between these guys where she doesn't necessarily want to be defending Manziel, but everybody's entitled to a defense. She is in the middle, but what's exciting to me is that when she is going to come out of the middle and asserts her own agency and is not just someone who's acted upon, but does the acting herself for her life and her survival. You want to talk about it? Not the marshal? No, not the marshal. What I love about Elmore Leonard's stuff is that he creates these characters who, they're blurred. It is a story about good and evil, but the characters themselves are not just good and not just evil, that they're, you know, they have both sides of the coin within them. Everybody lives in the gray areas. Every character is running a little bit of an angle. Nobody is straight. You don't quite know what to expect. What makes it enjoyable for us writers is to keep the audience guessing, to keep people on their toes. I'm not sure it's gonna be violent or funny or, you know, straightforward or a little sideways. And I mean, that's Elmore Leonard's world. Yeah.